Hey guys, so now that Apple has officially released iOS 18.2.1, there's a few things I think every iPhone user should probably do right after they're updating their devices to the latest OS. By the way, it is now available for all iPhones running iOS 18. You can update to 18.2.1. So there's a few things I always recommend. In this portion of the video is typically directed towards my newer subscribers. We gained about 6,000 new subscribers last month. So this portion of the video is for you for all all my long-term subscribers you can skip this part so the first two things I always recommend is number one you check for carrier updates now not everyone will get a carrier update but you want to jump into settings on your iPhone right after you update to 18.2.1 Head on over into general, head on over into the about section, and if you do have a carrier update, it should pop up on the center of your screen and look a little something like this. But again, not everyone will see this. If you do get one, then obviously you want to make sure that you update your carrier settings by clicking on update for better network performance, of course. Now, something else I always recommend is that you update your third-party apps, so apps that are not directly from Apple, okay? So you wanna go into the App Store on your iPhone after you update to 18.2.1. You wanna click on your account on the top right portion right here, and then you wanna hold and drag down like this to refresh, and if there's any updates, you'll see those updates down here on the bottom of the screen. See that? Right there, I have some updates for third-party applications, and I can update all my apps for better app performance and stability because iOS 18.2 was plagued with two issues. Number one, third-party app crashing on older devices like iPhone 11, iPhone 12, even 10R, 10S. And obviously you wanna make sure that you update your applications because there was also an issue being reported where some third-party apps were running in the background causing some iPhones to actually drain their battery quickly, okay? So you wanna head on over into the battery section here and take a look at all your applications that are using the battery. If you see any of the apps activated in the background longer than it should, then you wanna make sure that you update those applications and have a look at that app because that could be causing battery drain. That was a main issue on 18.2. So you wanna make sure that 18.2.1, all your apps, are up to date. Now there's also some issues reported in regards to Face ID. Now Face ID, some reports were saying that was sort of slow on some devices. I recommend that you reset your Face ID on iOS 18.2.1 only if you're having Face ID issues or if you feel like Face ID was a little slow to unlock your device and authenticate. Again, only if you were having issues. Don't do this if you don't have any issues. So go into Face ID and Passcode and Settings. Go ahead and enter your passcode and you'll have the option here to reset your Face ID in case you were having issues with Face ID. Now, the last thing I recommend you do is recalibrate the battery of your iPhone. Now, if you have a newer iPhone, you wanna make sure that you go into the battery section here, go under charging, and under charging, make sure that you set this to 100 only for the purpose of recalibrating the battery of your device, okay? So make sure that you do that. And then what you wanna do is go ahead and drain your device completely to zero. Let it die out on 18.2.1 and then charge it to 100, perhaps overnight, uninterrupted and what this will do is actually recalibrate the battery and of course by doing this you get the maximum capacity and the peak performance capabilities on iPhones updated and you'll see that if you go afterwards into battery health you'll get a more accurate reading so you want to make sure you drain your battery completely especially on older devices if you were having battery issues on your device and then again charge it all the way to 100 uninterrupted to get a better and more accurate reading of that battery health and to update the peak performance performance of your device and the battery as well. And these are going to be a few things. Keep in mind that iOS 18.2.1 does provide slight updates in terms of performance. And I mentioned this before. So 18.2.1 is here on the right and 18.2 is on the left. On the single core score, 18.2 is a little higher. You see there, 3,406 versus 3,302. But the multi-core performance went up over 100 points. Take a look here on iOS 18.2. We have 8,218 versus now on 18.2.1, 8,387. That is a hike, a big upgrade there in terms of performance on the multi-core side of things. And that can have a direct impact on how apps launch, on how apps no longer crash and things of that nature, again, especially on older devices. So there you guys have it. Just a quick video and a few things 
I recommend you do right after you update to 18.2.1. A small update with important bug fixes. Stay tuned for my follow-up. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.